Welcome, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Alexander Bertel, and I'm the editor in chief of Caribbean Journal, the world's largest website covering Caribbean travel. Welcome to our webinar, Aruba Travel Explained. Uh, Aruba began its tourism reopening back in June, first to neighboring islands Bonaire and Curacao, then to Canada and Europe, and then in mid-July to travelers from the United States. Uh, in the last three months, the island has undertaken arguably the most complete reopening of any destination in the Caribbean so far, buoyed by a set of health and safety protocols meant to mitigate the spread of the virus that has, at least for now, changed the world of travel. Uh, as demand for travel continues to rise, however, in the age of COVID, travelers more than ever want to know how to travel. That means understanding the protocols, understanding what's changed in the experience and which aspects of travel have remained the same. Uh, to help us explain, we've gathered a panel of travel and tourism leaders in Aruba. Uh, with us today are Tisa Lasort, President and CTO, CEO of the Aruba Hotel and Tourism Association, Dale McKinney, Regional Manager for the Caribbean at Delta Airlines, uh, Rafael Lopez Aliaga, Executive Chef at the Ritz Carlton Aruba, and Carolina Vuliem, Director of Sales and Marketing at the Aruba Marriott Resort and Stellaris Casino. Uh, if you have questions as we go along, please uh, post them in the Q&A section at the bottom of your Zoom screen, uh, and we'll try and get through as many of them as we can. Uh, again, thanks to all our panelists for being here. Uh, Tisa, let's start with you. Can you talk a little bit about the biggest question that everyone has, which is what are the protocols for travelers who want to come to Aruba? Yes, thank you. Um, yes, we've been happy to be able to have opened and to be able to have had enough experience now that we've sort of really improved upon and perfected our system. So the requirements are basically that there is an online um, embarkation, disembarkation card process that you have to go through and fill out. Part of that process requires basically like a health survey that you have to fill out. In addition, in terms of testing requirement, you have the option to either test prior to arrival with the test being taken and results received within 72 hours and 12 hours to flight and, and then upload it during this ED card process that I mentioned previously, depending on which US state you are from. So there are some states that were considered hot zone states. And those cases, you do not have the option to then also test in Aruba. So everybody else, has the option then to not test prior to travel, but to wait and test at arrival at the airport in Aruba, and then quarantine until you get the test result while you're in Aruba, so in your hotel room, basically. You can wait for the test result, which has averaged about six to eight to 10 hours to receive that. Um, again, those from the hot zone states would have to do it, definitely are required to do it prior to travel and then upload the test results prior to travel. In addition, um, there is currently a visitor insurance. Aruba created its own proprietary visitor insurance. Um, this is mostly to protect for anybody who finds themselves, first of all, having to go in isolation. You have to pay for the isolation um, location, uh, accommodation, so this would cover that. And of course, any hospitalization or medical costs. So um, these are sort of the options people have. This visitor insurance, I just wanted to uh, clarify, is reviewed every, since it's a new insurance is being reviewed every two months in terms of the risk factor and therefore reducing its fee every time it's being it's being evaluated if the risk is very low. Um, so those are the requirements we have currently and it's been going quite smoothly, I would say, of course, the biggest challenge is for people to find the ability to get the test done prior to travel within that 72 hour window. It's becoming easier and easier. Many prefer to do that because then you know that when you arrive, you know, you don't you don't run the risk that maybe you are positive and have to go into isolation. Right. What's the response from travelers been like so far since you reopened? Well, the beautiful thing is that after we were shut down for a few months and then opened back up, of course, you know, you have a small number of people that are arriving. Those that are arriving, we're noticing are, are have a higher degree of happiness than they've had in the past. Um, there, there's truly a, a high, I believe part of it is people are just so happy to be able to travel. Um, and I think, of course, Aruba and many other locations have sort of regenerated during during their lockdowns. And and, and, and so it's it's cleaner. It's I mean, the ocean is so clear. Everything is beautiful. It's, of course, fewer people also. Uh, the other thing that I'm finding very, uh, very interesting is I see the comments of our visitors that they really appreciate the safety measures we have in place. Many of our visitors talk about the fact that they actually felt safer on Aruba than they did back home. You know, they see the use of masks inside buildings. They see the hand sanitizer everywhere. Most establishments, they take your temperature before you enter. There's, there's quite a good structure in place right now. They feel quite safe. 
And um, so the enjoyment is high. They're truly appreciating the nature. They're appreciating the people. And they can notice that the Aruban population is very grateful to have to see the visitors that come to the island. We understand they're going through more trouble to arrive. And they're willing to do so. And they're enjoying their visit. That's great. Um... How has the experience on island changed? I mean, obviously some islands we've seen where you have to stay in sort of a corridor, other islands you have to, you can move around, you know, within your hotel. What's sort of, what's the experience like now? How much has it changed? Yeah, in Aruba, we are not requiring people to stay in their hotel, for example. We understand that part of Aruba's enjoyment is to enjoy the local food and the local nature and the local culture. So um, they can move around. Of course, we have all the health protocols in place. Um, we do have closing times. They've just increased it, however, um, as of today. Um, the restaurants um, and establishments now have to close at 11 p.m. Um, and then there's a, um, there's a curfew as of midnight. So between midnight and 5 a.m., you have to be inside. Great. Um, so let's go to, to you, Carolina, to talk a little bit about the hotel experience. Um, I think Carolina also has a presentation that she's going to share with us. Thanks again yes, for being here. Thank you. thank you, Alex. So I will share the presentation. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for, for being with us today. It's really nice to see the interest for our destination. And as this explained, we are ready and open. And I totally agree with what she was saying about the beach. Right now, Aruba had this this break of few months being closed. That, and when you go to the beach, it's better than ever. It's beautiful, 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 beautiful. So uh, talking about the protocols that we have in place here at the Aruba Marriott, um, you can see that our commitment to clean as married company, we cascade everything to our public areas, uh, to out, outdoor areas too. We're disinfecting the chairs, for example, we have QR codes for the menu, so you don't need to touch that. Uh, signage everywhere. We do require our guests to have masks only in the public areas. Of course, if you are tanning in our beautiful pool in the beach, you can remove your mask. Nobody wants to have like a mark here, right? <laughs> so we want to be safe, but we want to enjoy our vacation too. So um, the great thing also is like right now you have so much space because of course the tourism is not not like in the past, right? So we have less customers, but the ones that we have here are super happy. They're enjoying truly our destination. Our people, uh, you have no clue how happy our people is regarding uh, being open again for business because we are an island that we are almost 100% focused on tourism. So all our associates are extremely happy welcoming the guests back to Aruba. You can see here in the gym, the chairs, uh, the lounge chairs, we disinfect that so they can have um, a card that shows that are disinfected, ready for the next guest. So all the protocols in place to make your vacation amazing. So look at this view. I don't know where you are right now, but I think this view, it's priceless. This is Palm Beach Aruba. This is our Aruba Marriott Resort. The adult pool, the previous one was our main pool our beautiful lobby. We still have entertainment at nine. Of course, we need to comply with the local authorities' um, rules, but we still are able to have all our, all our restaurants open and entertainment at night in our lobby. Gelato, beautiful rooms with big balconies, just waiting for you and your guests. I hope that many of you have been in Aruba already, but if you have not been here, I invite you to join us. Come for a short break. You need to visit this destination. It's really amazing. Look at this view. It's like a corner junior suite with a beautiful view. And I know my colleague Rafa will talk about a uh, dining experience, but let me share just like my favorite here at, at Atardi in our restaurant. Amazing seafood and a variety of different fabulous dishes. We have a Ruth Chris also, pool bar, casino, and beautiful fitness center and spa. So let me stop sharing here. And Rafa, I think you're next. I think I should go to Dale. We're gonna go to Dale first. Yeah. So Dale's gonna to talk to us a little bit about the uh, experience of flying. You're not gonna to get to Aruba without an airplane. So. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, Carolina. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for uh, allowing me to uh, share with you the, the Delta travel experience. Um, as with everything else, uh, the uh, air travel experience ha has changed. And uh, 
you know, as, as you've probably seen uh, in different uh, outlets, uh, all the airlines are kind of doing um, something different. So uh, let me uh, get to going to show you what Delta is doing. We've, um, we've created um, a program called the Delta Care Standard. Um, and that is uh, going to include all of the new cleaning procedures um, that we have uh, created uh, to make your travel experience uh, safer. So I'm just gonna go through this um, to kind of show you uh, different areas throughout the travel experience uh, and I'll, I'll highlight some of the some of the big things. Um, the check-in and bag drop area. Um, you'll notice that we've put up plexiglass at um, all the check-in areas. Um, kiosks are being cleaned um, on a regular basis. Uh, we are um, recommending that travelers uh, download the Delta, uh, the Fly Delta app on their phone so that they can have a, a contactless experience. Uh, hand sanitizer dispensers are, uh, are all throughout uh, check-in, uh, security, uh, the gate area, et cetera. Um, all of our employees are wearing face masks. Um, we are uh, requiring that all customers wear a face mask um, through, throughout the entire experience at the airport, including on board. Um, and we do, uh, we've got a packet uh, that we can hand out uh, to passengers if they forgot their mask at home um, or do not have one, um, that they, we've got masks available um, with uh, Purell wipes. So that's kind of the, the check-in experience. You'll notice uh, decals on the floors to just remind everybody to, um, to have some distance between the next customer. Uh, security checkpoints. So one thing that um, has changed here, um, you'll notice number one, uh, the antimicrobial bins um, have been rolled out in our bigger um, hubs, uh, Atlanta, Minneapolis, um, that should be Los Angeles. LaGuardia and JFK. Um, and we will get those out to um, other outlying stations, but since those are our biggest hubs, um, that's where we started. Sky Clubs, so Sky Clubs have um, begun to reopen. Uh, we have uh, temporarily consolidated some operations. So in airports where we might have two or three uh, clubs, um, maybe one or two may be open, um, but we have begun to reopen them. Um, as with uh, what we're doing on board, we're using the electrostatic uh, spray um, in the clubs at night. Face, ma uh, face masks are required. Um, plexiglass has been added, hand sanitizer, dispensers, and we've, uh, we've got the grab and go selections for, for food. Um, so we don't have the, the open uh, buffets out um, at this point. Um, you'll also see that the um, capacity has been capped uh, and we are blocking um, certain seats uh, around the club just to, again, ensure that distance. Um, at the gate um, and boarding, again, we're electrostatic um, spraying the gate areas. Um, decals have been put on the floor. Um, all customers must wear a mask. Um, and that is from the time you get on um, the airplane until you get off of the airplane. Um, gate counters being wa uh, washed down. Um, again, use the Fly Delta app so that you can have a contactless experience. Um, the big thing, number 10, uh, that you can see there, we have uh, at 600 plus Delta gates through the region, um, we are updating um, the MERV 14 air filters, and those are the air filters that are attached to the jet bridges that produce heat or air conditioning. Um, so those are being um, upgraded to, again, just help with particles in the air. On the airplane, um, so we've got a 44 point checklist that must be completed between every single flight. Um, and that 
is just different cleaning areas that need to be um, touched before the aircraft can depart. We are electrostatic spraying every single flight um, between every single flight. So um, we've decided that we are gonna stick with what we started with uh, and that's the safest thing to do. Laboratories are clean before and during uh, flight. Flight attendants are given a, a cleaning kit um, so that they can keep the, the laboratories uh, cleaned. Uh, Purell hand sanitizer stations um, are going to be available near boarding doors and lavatories. And we are um, putting them on every single uh, Delta aircraft um, so that they will be, um, passengers can use the Purell uh, stuff as, uh, as often as they want while they're on board. Um, there's a lot that goes into that with uh, regulations and the FAA. So um, we're working through that to get those sanitizers put on the aircraft. Overhead bins are um, sanitized. The big thing, number six, you'll see that we're really um, trying to get out there is that uh, the freshest air is on an airplane. Uh, the, the HEPA filters that we use are the same high grade HEPA filters that you will find in a um, operating room at a hospital, um, which extract more than 99.99% .99 of particles. So um, it, the, uh, we're just trying to get that fact out there because everybody thinks that the air on the airplane is horrible and really it's uh, almost the best you can get. We have decided that we are going to leave all middle seats blocked um, and that we've announced uh, until January 6th. So um, every center seat on the airplane will be blocked. Um, for uh, just to give that space and, and safety for the for passengers. Uh, the only difference would be the first class cabin. Uh, we are uh, keeping that around 50%, um, but it may be a passenger or two more depending if there are um, passengers traveling together. So if you've got two people traveling together, that number may go up a little bit, but um, we're, we're sticking with the 50%. Uh, again, customers must wear a uh, face mask. Um, around your space, um, we've taken magazines off. The only thing on there is the safety card, which um, is required, of course. Um, tray tables are being wiped down between every flight. Um, you are given a complimentary care kit, um, which will have a face mask, a sanitizing wipe um, available to you. Uh, you'll notice on uh, number seven, the snack bags. Uh, so we've got pre-packaged snack bags, which will have a bottle of water, a sanitizing wipe or gel, um, and you'll get um, a bag of snacks um, included in that. And baggage claim is kind of the same thing. You'll see decals on the floor um, and just notifications, of course, to keep your distance um, from other passengers. Uh, you'll see the Purell hand sanitizer stations, uh, and we are electrostatic spraying. Um, we have also partnered with Lysol. Um, so they're our partner. Um, so you'll be seeing more things come out um, with our partnership regarding the Delta Care standard um, as we continue to learn more um, of how to keep everyone safe. Great. That's really helpful, Dale. I think that's one of the biggest questions I know that everyone has seemed to have. Um, so thanks for that. Um, now, I think we're going to go to Chef Rafa. Obviously, Aruba is one of the, the top culinary destinations in the Caribbean, so a lot of people want to know how the dining experience has changed. Um, so Chef Rafa, thanks for being with us, and I think you have a presentation as well. Yes, that's correct. Bon tardi. Uh, good afternoon. I want to share my presentation. Thank you for, for letting me uh, be part of the, of this uh, of this uh, interview. So, what everybody is asking now, no? How, how that? Okay, how our dining experience changed, no? So, probably one of the most important topic is that the cleaning protocols, no? 
So like, like Carolina mentioned, cleaning protocols are, are, are changing uh, dramatically in all our operations, no? Uh, we modify our floor plans as well, no? Uh, the elimination of, of self-buffet and, 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 and let me tell you, no, this is, uh, we, we, we remove the self-serve buffet, but we create a different experience, no? We create a unique upscale a la carte uh, buffet experience where we present a perfect fruit plates, cocas, a fresh baked croissant, a special a menu with you can order a fresh a, a la carte items like egg benedict, avocado toast, waffles, you no know, so so always a bringing that a legendary service from the Ritz Carlton, no. Also, another thing that we took in consideration is our ladies and gentlemen, how how we need to train in these new protocols, no. Uh, how do we need to adapt to the new social distancing, uh, the, the, the personal protective equipment that they need to wear, the face covering, the use of gloves, no? So those items we took a lot into consideration, no? Uh, the importance of the hand washing and the sanitizing, the cleaning of our public spaces, but also the heart of the house, all those protocols, and of course, touchless transactions, and Carolina mentioned something very important, no? the QR codes to view our menus. No? Uh, we redesigned our food and beverage service and option, but without affecting our restaurant concepts. No? And let me, let me tell you a little example about what we had the opportunity to do this. No? Uh, we create a, a beach picnic experience. Uh, where we present a luxury Ritz Carlton picnic bag, but with beautiful items like a fresh fumus with a crudites, prosciutto, a nice bottle of champagne. So when couples come to our hotel, they can enjoy it at the beach or if they want to go out on an excursion or in a boat trip, no? A meeting spaces, also that was something that was very uh, unique, how we, how we evolved a little bit the same, no? that self-service, Buffet, we change it to experience of, of, of live stations where, where chefs are cooking and connecting with our guests, no? presenting beautiful uh, micro, micro cuisine. So small dishes presenting uh, all, all the nice preparation from, from our chefs. No? Uh, regarding regarding uh, the social distancing, uh, I want to give you a, a, a something that, that we, we, we implemented and, and, and it works uh, uh, very nice for us, especially for, for events, no? So in order to maintain social distancing, uh, what we do is when it's time to serve the food, uh, we uh, basically we call table individually one by one, no? So they can go and, and connect with, with, with the chef that is preparing the food. That's avoid uh, any agglomeration, no? Also, technology uh, is is was is super important for us, and and so we explore we explore all the new meetings uh, technology with the support of live streaming and touchless option, and of course the Marriott meeting service app. You no, know? uh, regarding the 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 in so. We want our guests to have a voyage into our culinary experience in our hotel, no? Uh, so we we were very lucky that all our restaurants uh, they they have uh, indoor and outdoor uh, seating with beautiful views, no? So so for example. Uh, what we did uh, uh, is we limited the space. We reduced the space to 50% 50, 50 of the capacity, uh, but, but without affecting the, the elegance of our restaurant and the luxury no? uh, and the service, of course. No? Uh, in addition, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the in-room dining experience uh, that we offer uh, sunset dinners on the beach uh, for couples or family, as well as intimate private dinner experience in the comfort of the guest balcony with amazing views, no, of our uh, 
of our island, no, of our beaches. Uh, as I mentioned before, most of our restaurants offer indoor and outdoor seating overlooking the beach or the resort gardens. No? Uh, I want to mention something, uh, Bill T. Steak, uh, this is his, his fifth anniversary. So, so five years of BLT bringing amazing, amazing product. Uh, this is a modern American steakhouse that is specialized in, in premium uh, select steaks. No, uh, we have also Casanona that is a, uh, Casanona New York that is a, we prepare our fresh pasta every, every day. And so all our restaurants are different, different concepts, no? And that's the whole idea, no? We create different experience for our guests. Um, and, and also uh, dinner on the beach, no? Dinner on the beach, we have the time to, to evolve this idea, no? And we create a, an urban experience of, the, of our traditional dinner on the beach. So this time we have the opportunity to plan for, for this unique experience where you can enjoy all the, the Arubian cuisine, basically. So, so we are welcome uh, tourists again, and, and, and we're looking for, for any question, if you have any question. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Um, Chef, have you seen a big increase in room service requests, or is that, how is that sort of changing? That is, that is something that, that, that not only in room service, but dinner on the beach. Dinner on the beach is a product that we created probably five years ago, but I think guests, they want to enjoy uh, the uh, dinner with their family, no, with the uh, couple, so, so increase a lot, increase a lot, significant. But the good thing is that we have a, a, a very large uh, beach so, so the experience to be by yourself with your family is there, is there. You know, Chef, can you actually can you turn off the screen share? I think we, uh... absolutely. Awesome, thank you. Um, Carolina, I wanted to ask you a question. Um, what kinds of vacations are your guests taking? Do you see any difference sort of the length of stay? Uh, what are people doing or how has that changed? I think you're on mute. Carolina. I think you're still on mute, Carolina. Now? There we go. Sorry. Um, so what we are seeing a lot at the Marriott is that we see a lot of uh, couples coming on vacation and staying more like a, a week, five, day, five, five days, six days, that in the past was more like three or four days. We're not seeing many families currently, but it can be also the time of the year, but in general, many couples. And our loyal repeat guests also are here. Many millennials also coming uh, as first time to Aruba. Yeah, that, that would be my next question. Are you saying, is it more repeat than, than new guests or are you seeing people who kind of know Aruba already? No, I, would, I would say that like it's balance. Okay. Interesting. And, and Dale, one question we had for you was, uh, is there a sense of where Delta's, from where Delta's flying to Aruba right now? Yes, yeah, so we're um, operating out of um, Atlanta and JFK. Um, of course, you know, it can, um, it can change, but, um, Right now through uh, for October, Atlanta is uh, flying six days a week. Um, JFK is flying five days a week. Uh, then the first half of November, they both go daily. Uh, second half of November right now, Atlanta will be daily and JFK is six days. Right. So it's, uh, it's starting to, uh, to pick up for sure. Um, and Carolina, one other question. Um, we've seen more islands starting to offer these sort of extended stay programs. Uh, I know Aruba recently launched one. Uh, is that something, can you talk about that? And, and is that something you're starting to see demand for, for sort of longer stays like that? Actually, yeah, the workstation. And I love the, I love the name, the workstation. And that we're seeing a lot. Um, um, People that are coming here that probably are working online or the kids are also having online online schooling. So what better than stay in a beautiful resort? You can work in different areas. If you want, you can even work in the, in the beach. So yeah, that's a trend that we're seeing also. And we're part of the offer that Aruba is doing. 
with a workstation promotion. Tisa, is that something you're seeing across the, the island's hotel product in general? Yeah, what was interesting was that even before the promotion, we noted that actually people were already coming for longer stays, that especially mm -hmm. when we just originally opened in July and in August, people were coming for longer than normal, like Carolina was mentioning. So it's sort of like either they have more time or they're working from home anyway, so they might as well work from a beautiful place in a nice environment. And also you're going through a little bit more trouble to travel, right? So you might as well stay a little longer and enjoy it a little longer. So we did start seeing that pattern anyway. And then this was just a great way to, you know, encourage, remind them of the possibility. And, you know, one of the things I always say about Aruba is that Aruba is a very, I call it a user-friendly destination you know, especially for Americans, you know, dollars are accepted, English is spoken widely, you can walk around, you know, everything is accessible, you can walk around easily. So and now with all the health protocols in place, you can also feel safe while doing that. So um, I think all of that, you know, the internet is good, right? So um, I think all of that makes it quite easy for somebody to make such a decision. Tisa, are you starting to get a sense of what the winter is going to look like or you know, as demand increases? Are you you have a sense of that yet for the island? Yeah, we're in the process right now of accumulating some of that information. Um, I, I, you know, it always sounds um, uh, a little strange when I say this, but of course, it's it's not at the levels. It's not going to be for a while at the levels we had seen. Um, you know, obviously before the crisis hit us. Um, but if we see a little bit of progress and slow growth and we see the reaction that we're receiving right now from our guests, the fact that we're seeing such positive reactions is of course very encouraging. Um, we do of course still have the Latin American market is still is still closed to Aruba. So, you know, that knocks out some of our market. And, um, but we're seeing slow, it's slow growth. It's so glow, slow growth, but we are expecting a little bit of growth in October, a little bit of growth in November, and then up to December. Um, our, our expectation at this point is that we would be around 40% occupancy, for example, in December, where normally, of course, that would be around 80%, right? So um, slowly but surely. Is there, uh, one of the questions we have in the audience is about the occupancy. Is there sort of a cap, like a set cap on occupancy? Yeah, there is no set cap, um, but there's an organic cap in the sense that the travel is just less. So there's really no need for a cap at this point. Um, so what you have is in terms of, because I understand where that question is going. Um, so uh, just to, to mention two things, at the, when I mentioned the restaurants closing, we do have a rule, for example, at restaurants that four people maximum to a table, not counting children under 12. So there are other types of measures in place to allow for the sense of safety, because I think part of the question comes from, will I feel safe in a hotel or is it going to be crowded? I can assure you it's not crowded. It's far from crowded because we just don't have that level of travel yet at this point. So in, on top of the fact that there's so fewer people traveling, you also have, um, the, you have all the measures in place. So you have physical distancing that's being enforced. You have masks that are being enforced. You have, again, the sanitation that is being highly enforced. So um, I think um, there's no concern for being stuck in a crowd. Right. And do you get a sense of how visitors are actually behaving and complying with the protocols? Is that, is that, how's that going? Actually, frankly, um, happy to see that they are happy to comply. And um, they're happy to see our measures because that makes them feel safe, of course, and they're happy to comply with the measures. I think most come from areas where there are measures also. So it's not like we're asking them to do anything unusual. We're asking them to protect themselves and to protect those around them, which I'm hoping most of the human race would be willing to do. Right. Um, so we have some more questions. Uh, I think first for Tisa about the travel insurance. I think there's a lot of confusion about when do you buy it? Where do you, what are the different types? What is, explain that to us. Yeah, I think one of the main questions is, but I have my own insurance already. So um, at this point, Aruba still requires the Aruba visitor insurance on top of whatever insurance you may have. You may still want to have your own insurance because some people want to hope, for, um, for example, the EVAC, right? They want to be able to know that they can do the EVAC and this, the Aruba visitor insurance wouldn't cover that. However, what it covers you is the, um, the, the isolation accommodation because we have sort of condos and apartments available for isolation accommodation. So it helps you cover that. And it covers any, any, it's a higher limit of medical expenses that is covered than the normal travel insurance would cover. 
Um, so the, the fee is still low and we're looking at possibly as time goes by lowering it even more. Um, but um, it is an additional insurance at this point that is required. So I wanna make sure. And then we've made it as easy as possible. The Aruba Tourism Authority has worked very hard on creating an online system that is easy to use. And uh, so that, that ED online embarkation disembarkation card process that I mentioned is the same process you use to either load your test that you did prior or pay for the test that you get to do at the Aruba airport and to also purchase the visitor insurance. So it's all during that same online process. Okay, and when does that begin? When should you start filling out that application? It should be done within 72 hours and 12 hours of flight. Okay, so and there's also, Aruba also has an app. We have like a health app. So you download that also in advance. So if you get the test done in Aruba, for example, then you actually get your result on that app. I recently went through it myself. I had to uh, leave and come back and went through and I indeed, I got my result in six hours on my app. Oh, great, okay. Um, we have another question about the hot, hot zone list for the US, which states, is there a place where, where people can find that list? Yeah, I recommend instead of me naming the list because things like that are reviewed daily and can be adapted. So I'm always afraid to misspeak. So uh, the best thing to do is to go to aruba.com. That is the official website where any new, if the requirements are changed, if anything that changes, that's where it's updated. So on aruba.com, there's a tab for health requirements, health like entry requirements. And that's where you find the list of states, all the requirements, and there's a link to this online ED process. So there's quite, um, all the relevant information can be found there, including information on the insurance. Great. Um, Carolina, what about at the Marriott, what, have, what kind of response are you seeing? And, and then also what, what, what are you seeing ahead in the next few months? Do you get a sense of, of where bookings and reservations are headed? Yeah, very similar what Tisa explained. We are seeing that the occupancy it's uh, growing slowly. Of course, we are behind the numbers of last year, but we are very happy that like slowly that we are growing um, back again. So for December, we are expecting to have around um, fifty percent, forty-five percent occupancy for the hotel. Uh, of course, being busier the the last two weeks of the month, like especially between Christmas and, and New Year. And then for the first quarter of 2021, uh, we're expecting also like not to have like a high season VC as it usually was that we were running 97%, 96%. So we probably will be around the 60s on 60, 65 and, um, and growing, growing from there. And that's good for us because I think we, we are learning how to live this new normality. And if we just jump into something that is super busy, maybe we don't have the chance to, to learn in the way. So right now, our guests are super happy to help, to protect themselves and to protect others. And they're able to enjoy a beautiful vacation at the same time. So um, our team is getting better and better. Our protocols are improving every day. Um, the experience of the vacation for our guests is our main priority, of course, with also with their, um, their safety. So we're working on the experience also every day. Right. How, how have uh, excursions changed? And how, what's the hotel doing in that regard as the guests who want to get out and explore? And has that changed at all the way you manage that? Sorry? I mean, in terms of excursions and activities outside of the hotel, are people booking those typically through the hotel or is there has that changed at all in terms of what you can enjoy outside the hotel? Outside the hotel, you mean other restaurants, like tours and things like that? Exactly. Yeah, no, we, we still have available many of them, the attractions. The only thing that is more restricted is the time. So currently uh, it's uh, early because you have a curfew and then during this weekend, they're extending the hours again. So the restaurants uh, will be open until 11 p.m. So it's a very good time actually. But the activities during the day, Everybody has their own protocols, like depending on the activity, but there are, are available, so you can you can do it. We are seeing so though that many of our guests are dining more in the hotel instead of going more for the local dine around experience. Right. And the casino is open at the hotel? Yes. Okay. And is there any, uh, what about, you mentioned that you're having a lot of uh, sort of couples. Uh, for families who do want to visit is, what kind of activities are available for kids and how has that changed? Oh, for the kids, I mean, we are very lucky because the beach in Aruba is actually like a pool. So for any parent that is coming here with a small kids is the best 
place to be because they can really enjoy truly the beach without being super uh, concerned. It's not that we have waves or anything. It's just very flat, very shallow, so beautiful. But if not, we have like different activities in the hotel that they can paint, they can do like some uh, manualities and so. We especially have activities normally during um, the vacation time. So let's say in July or in the big holidays like Thanksgiving or um, the holiday week in December. Okay. Interesting. Um, Nadell, we have one question about the mask policy on Delta. Are face shields an option for people who, for some reason, can't wear a mask? Uh, so um, you do have to have a face covering. Uh, a face shield does not replace the mask. Okay, so you, you'd have to supplement. You use a, you can use a shield, but you do have to have a face covering or or mask. Okay. Um, Thanks, Dale. Tisa, another transportation question. Um, how have the sort of buses and taxis and Jenny's, how has that changed? So of course the, the biggest change is um, that the uh, face masks are required. So as a matter of fact, um, upon arrival, so you'll notice like the airline will require the face mask, right? And then throughout the airport process, the face mask is required. And then all at arrival, all the way through your transportation, all the way through check-in until you get to your room. Um, and so that's for arrival, but in, in any transportation at any time during your stay, a face mask is required to be worn on the bus or in the taxi or in the, in the car. Um, and I just wanted to go through and, and ask each of you sort of what your outlook is in general, both for Aruba and then just for travel in general. Um, I'll start with you, Carolina. What do you think's ahead for, for travel in Aruba and for travel in general? I'm so sorry, but they, it's interrupting when you talk for me. Oh, sorry. Um, the question was about your outlook for Aruba and for travel in general in the age of COVID. I'm super positive. I'm super positive. And, and I know that we have been going through very, very terrible and difficult times. But I think traveling is such a beautiful and such a pleasure in life that I believe that pandemic or not, very, very soon we will start traveling again. So I think that slowly, of course, we will not have the numbers immediately like we used to have in the past. but. Uh, it's in all our hands, right? To make sure that people feel safe and they know they can still enjoy life, a vacation in a beautiful place. So I believe that we will all start traveling very soon back. Awesome. Chef Rafa, what about you? What's your outlook? So as Carolina mentioned, we are super positive. Uh, I, think, I think that it's a perfect time to come to Aruba right now because Having this amount of, of people in the island is it, basically is something that, that you are not going to have it probably in 2021, right? So right now is is enjoy. And I think people want to travel, no? All of our guests want to travel. Um, coming to Aruba probably will be one of the best places to travel at the moment, no? So and, and, and if you go and you compare with other places, Aruba people is taking very serious, no? People is wearing masks, is doing, everybody's following the protocols, no? Everywhere. So it's not only in our hotels, but you see it in the street, you see it in other restaurants, you see it everywhere. So because Aruvian, they want the tourists to start and pick, picking up again, no? And, and everybody's working together towards our goal, no? To have uh, Aruba activated and, and ready. And, and, and you see it, no? And right now, the amount of people that is enjoying enjoying the beach and the island is breathtaking, to be honest, no? Because right now it's like, you see this beautiful and looks like for yourself or your family. So it's a perfect time to enjoy it, sunset and, and the beach and everything about Aruba and the people, because the people of Aruba probably is one of the greatest things that, that we have here, no? Remember, it's a, one happy island. Awesome. Yeah, what about you? What, uh, what do you see ahead? Um, we're seeing a, you know, a steady um, uh, incline back, um, you know, from, from where we were in March, um, you know, different destinations, uh, different uh, outlook, but 
you know, overall, it's a, it's a pretty steady incline. Right. And uh, Tisa, what about you? What, what do you see ahead for Aruba? And for yeah, I agree that there's definitely a desire to travel that that wanderlust is, is not disappearing and maybe even increasing after we've been cooped up. Um, so I do see, of course, a beautiful recovery, but a slow recovery that maybe by 2023, we're back to almost, almost normal level. So it'll be a slow recovery, but will improve. And I see as the future, and this is a hint for Dale also, that um, it, travel will become um, easier, right? Like even with this issue, it'll become, you know, the testing will become easier. Testing will become a, a shorter process. And the hint here is that the airlines will be incorporating the testing into the travel process and make it sort of so we have a, I see the future or the near future as a global norm for travel because right now you have all these different countries with different protocols and that is a little bit confusing so I see is moving towards sort of one standard one protocol one global way of entry and and an easy testing process hopefully via the airlines great um, well first I want to thank all of you for, for joining us um, it's it's very nice to even be having this conversation because I think there was a period of time and in the spring when we all didn't know if we would ever have these conversations again. Um, so just, just the mere fact of, of having this webinar is great. Um, it's great to see that an island like Aruba, which was one of the first destinations to reopen, uh, has done so and has done so successfully. Um, I think it's also great to see that people are starting to feel confident. And, and the biggest thing is everything that you guys have said about people need to feel confident, feel safe. Um, and it's, it's good to see that everyone from aviation to hotel industry um, to food is, is doing their part and, and making sure that that happens because if, if people don't feel confident, they're not going to travel. Um, and I think everyone who tuned in today can see uh, the lengths to which the industry is going in Aruba to do that. Um, so thank you so much again, uh, Carolina Vuillem from the Aruba Marriott, Rafael Lopez Aliaga from the Ritz Carlton Aruba, Dale McKinney from Delta Airlines, and Tisa Lasort from the Aruba Hotel and Tourism Association. Uh, thank you all, our audience, for, for tuning in and giving us your time. Uh, we're going to be posting this web, the, the video of this webinar in the next few days and, and doing a story. So uh, you'll be able to find it there. And thank you all again. And if you have any other questions, please post them. Um, we'll try and answer them directly. And uh, thank you for, for following us. Have a great day.